Yeah, we just tried to switch. We all got new headsets this week, and we've been having like a time getting them working properly. Like, it seems like Conan's picking up a little echo in his room, so we're still working it out. But you know, you can you can hear. Hey, y'all got new headsets. That sound like y'all got money, man. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying to move up. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing very well. Nice to have you on the show. And nice to meet you, man. Nice, man. Nice to meet y'all, man. I. I as a wrestling fan, I, I'm still tripping out on the stuff I get to do. So uh, it's definitely the pleasure is all mine. Let me ask you a question right off the bat, just to sort of see your fandom from when it started. When was the first time you saw wrestling and who kind of, kind of put you up on it? Because my dad and my uncle put me up on wrestling. Uh, my first interaction with wrestling actually came from a video game. Right. Uh, my older brother, Daryl, he... Uh, he and I used to be on the Sega Genesis hard and uh, I can't think of the, the name of the game off the top of my head right now, but I was Undertaker, he was Shawn Michaels and we would just give people the business. It's just like, that's just always, that was always a, a, a bonding thing between me and my brother were the games. And then when he showed me the actual thing, I was hooked. Um, well, the first, first wrestler that was like my favorite was Undertaker. I mean, he's just, he was just this unstoppable force. And as a little kid, that's who you want on your side. So, so what year are we talking about? What year are we talking about? We would have, it would have to be what, 96? Yeah. It has to be about, you know, about right before I started school. Um, and then from there is talking to schoolyard kids about, you know, what happened on Raw and, and, and all that noise. And yeah, so that, that was, uh, that was around the time I, I jumped Wait, on. So you, you're like five, this is like when you're like six, five, six years old, right? Yeah, I was not supposed to be watching. <laughs> yeah, especially not in the late nineties, right? <laughs> was your was your dad a wrestling fan? Yeah, my uh my dad was a wrestling fan. Uh me and him had our our little uh not really a, a, a beef or nothing, but when, when Rock went up against Hogan, I did not want to hear none of that Hogan noise, bro. <laughs> I was not trying to hear about uh eating my vitamins and saying prayers. I was all rock. And, uh, you know, that's, that's his era. You know, he, he's watching all that Coco beware and, you know, all that's a junkyard dog, but, uh, it, it, uh, it definitely is something that has been passed down throughout the house. Uh, I got a daughter, I got a six year old and, you know, personally, I want her to play basketball, but put the basketball in her hand and she looked at me like I was crazy. But then uh, me and her aunt, my little sister Karima, we were watching wrestling and she saw Alexa Bliss and Bianca Belair. And she looked at me and goes, Daddy, I want to do that. So I was like, that sounds great. Uh, all right, let's do it right now. So she goes behind the curtain. I play her little entrance music. She comes out on her little karaoke machine and does a little promo. Then she beats up her auntie for about half an hour. And I, I love it every time. How old is she? How old is she? Yeah. She's six. She's six? Yeah, so she'll be seven uh, in August. If she gets really serious about it, when would you have her training? At what age? Oh, my. I, I wouldn't even know. I would have to get advice from everybody. I'm, I don't like when she jumped down the steps, bro. <laughs> uh, I get, yeah, I'm, I'm that type dad. This is my first and only baby. I need right. her to be intact. Yes. Right. And uh, so, you know, she, she's in the gymnastics, though, so she's... Running, bro, and I, hey, off stuff. that will help her a lot. If not, yeah, she's she's lot. really a wrestling really a lot in today's game. Um, that <laughs> were you? I'm sorry, cut you off. Were you watching the the Monday Night Wars, or you were too too young to understand it? I was. I didn't recognize that like, oh, they don't like each other, <laughs> right? You know, I was just enjoying it. You know, I was just catching one on at one time and, and vice versa. So I didn't, I, you know, I never picked a side or anything. And being the age that I was, didn't even register to me that some of the guys are in WCW are WWF guys and vice versa. Right. So finding that out, the older I got, that was like the best can of worms to, to open up. And uh, yeah, I, I was a fan of both, watched both as much as I could, um, you know. Now, what what did you think when you first saw the luchador? You had the, what the hell is this? Bro, so it's this like, right. yeah, you know, if you're used to the big, you know, uh, uh, body slam, pick you up, throw you out the ring, all that, but 
the the way of the luchador is just so and when it's done right it is the crispest cleanest way of of doing it and it's, it's, it's done with barn and looks like crap yeah oh my god yeah because it, it yeah. can get real right if you don't know what's happening you yeah. do it yeah. you get real Cirque du Soleil and it's just like right. y'all not you know it, it, you start yeah. doing the, the trapeze thing right right 100 percent yeah, it's a question. It's pretty funny because I see you beaching on uh, uh with with the fans online, kind of like I do, you know. But but they just, you know, they're just, it's kind of weird, you know. Because I I grew I grew up a wrestling fan, right? And you you grew up a wrestling fan. Like when did you see like like because we know how we are, like as wrestling fans and what we like to certainly. Like when do you when do you think this kind of got weird where wrestling fans kind of changed and we see like the wrestling fans today, which are just. They're just, they just, they're, it's like they act different than the way, like the, 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 the way we grew up acting as, as wrestling fans. What, what, what would you see that kind of change? Yeah, I, I don't, I, and I'm having a, a battle with that myself of just like, why is everybody acting like we all work just a certain way? Like, it, it, a lot of my followers have been trying to tell me that it's, it's the people that I'm really arguing with are members of the, the IWC. And, you know, I don't. By the way, I need to know how much I need to censor myself because when I go and I'm going, yeah, let, 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 yeah. let me let me let me let me tell you the number of the show. Keep it in one hundred, right. okay? Appreciate that. That's what we keep it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, bro, like, can you not be so fucking snobby about wrestling? Like, if I don't know, I don't know what I don't know. And so, right. you know, when you see motherfuckers online getting mad that. Uh, uh, like my man Okada, he he's he's coming over, or that's what they say. He's coming over to WWE, and you got people uh, on now. WWE fans are gonna act like they know who Okada was. Let me find out. Let me look. And also, let's not act like we all wasn't WWE fans, bro. Like it, it's it's the it's the biggest company for a reason. Don't you can like an alternative without shitting on where we came from. Like, chill out with that. And at the end of the day, I get a kick out of being at a heel on Twitter. Right. Right. It is my favorite thing to do right now, dude. I don't know how much you know about us, but we're mega heels. <laughs> I've been lying. We've been heels, you know, in the wrestling business. But so we like to troll them because they're very sensitive. They'll talk shit all day. And when you come back, they'll cry. And then they'll try to get other people They'll, you know, mop up on you and cancel you and all this other shit. Like, bro, I come from a, we've come from a different generation. We don't melt down, you know what I'm saying, if at all. But it's funny because you bring up the Japanese thing with Okada. This is me, me and it's something me and Disco always talk about. For example, like on AW, you know, Disco's like, who's this old looking guy, right? And I'm like, well, it's Zuki, you know? And so, like, they don't even have, like, you know, you watch UFC? You watch UFC? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, before every UFC match, they have a little video clip telling you who this guy is, who this guy is, where they're from, who they knocked out. So you know what the fuck is going on. And then they trot, talk stiff to each other. Okay, you're invested. In AEW, yeah. some Japanese guy shows up, but you're supposed to know who they are. And if you don't, you're done. You know, and like, yeah, exactly. that is that it. I don't, I don't watch Japanese wrestling. They're... I had a lot of other shit that I could watch and do. You know, I spend my whole day watching wrestling. Exactly, dude. I'm not like I, I'm not about to I don't know everybody. I can't right. watch everybody at the same time. I got shit I gotta do, man. And uh, you know I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it, it hasn't reached over, but tell me what channel the shit come on. Like I I I, right. I I need to also recognize that, you know, there there are Different levels to wrestling, different styles for sure. Because I, AEW, they just want to be uh, New Japan America. Like that's just what the whole thing is. And, and I, you know, I don't. Uh, a lot of people think that I. This is doing what they need, by the way. Yeah, dude, that's what they want. That is everything that they they try to emulate and, and do. And instead of you know, it's feeling like them introducing it. They want you to be ready and knowledgeable right. and already invested. Right. And I don't know what, like, you, you, there's no buildup. Matches are just put together, like, like at, at random. And yeah, I get it. If you know these guys, is their background and, and their accolades and all that, it might be a dream match for you. 
But you trying to sell this shit to American television, man. You got to get cinematic, it. like cinematic that shit up a little bit. It, it, it's, it's like you're not you're not putting the zhuzh that you need for it to be any type of excitement unless you in this fucking niche pocket of fans that that know. And when you speak on that or when you're like, hey, I, you know, what's going on? Oh, you know, you don't know wrestling. Oh, you don't like real wrestling. You like watching that kid shit. What are you talking about, dog? <laughs> right. it, it's, it's so, it, it gets you to the point where dealing with those type people makes you not want to fuck with what they like. It's this is, then, this, is the way, this, this is the way I would get Because you just, you just kind of open, I just thought of this while we were having this conversation. Is that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an echo chamber of people that literally like all they like is professional rest. Okay, like, like that's it. Like, we like sports. You're a sports fan. Like, like, I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, well, by the way, just real a quick sidebar. We're going to get to that pretty soon, okay? Take it easy. Not, not fair. Oh, Tom, the men, Bookie. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I said, like, yeah, I found it, you're a Rams fan, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. They are, they are here, too. They yeah, right. Too. Okay, so you're an L.A. fan. Okay, but, like, when, with sports, okay, like, a lot of when people watch sports, and they, they get invested in it because it's real. You know, there's mm. real competition. The, the games actually mean something. The players are making millions of dollars. So when, when you invest, like, in sports, especially, like, if you bet on it, like, you're reading, you know, you're you're t- t- looking at the players, the stats, and stuff like that. But, but mm. we like sports, you know? Right. When, with wrestling, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that. It's a scripted mm. show. It's fake. It's just like, you know. A, that's what like the commentators are for. It tells you what right, the right, right, right. That's what you have video packages for. Right. You don't have to right. be looking up the shit on some ancillary show. Right. So there's this community of people yeah. that follow wrestling like we follow sports. And they're mm-hmm. mad at us for not following it like they do. And wait, it's like, wait, you know, wait, wait. And, and it's like, you know, so go, like, you know, you get, I, I bro, you, you, you get attacked online. I'm like, I'm like, where do these people come from? I go, they don't follow me. They don't like, you know, I, I got like. 60 responses, none of them follow me. They're all in the sulky you know, yeah. I know what, like, where do these people come from? And I just wonder, like, you know, what if there's, you know, I just thought of this because you, you mm. were talking about you get attacked. What if there are, like, just wrestling bots that look for people to come on wrestling? And these 100% people, there are. Like, you know, yeah, I mean, it has to be, right? Because there, there has to be, 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 go ahead. There has to be from both companies. Like, right. it, it just, like, both major companies, it, it it just has to be because there's some people on Twitter. If I mention an inkling of something being wrong with something I saw on AEW, the floodgates open. And just as wild as those pages are, there are WWE counterparts. And I'm not about to sit here and let you you know, serve me shit and tell me it's sugar, bro. How many damn times can we see uh, four minutes of chops <laughs> in a match <laughs> and y'all supposed to tell me this is some five, six-star classic? Right. I just watch them try to tear each other's chest open. And like, that, like it, it's not every single match over there got at least a four-minute. Because like, like you said, it, New Japan and USA, that's that, it. It's in New Japan, right? That's what they want to do. That strong style and all that. Right. I, I, I get it. But there is a delicate way. You don't feed a baby steak. All right. You don't give a, a newborn baby something you're trying to introduce solid food to. You don't give him steak. It'll choke. You right. got to tender morsel that shit up and, and slowly, gradually get it to where he enjoys it. And they just didn't do that. It is like a, a frat. And it's, if you if you don't if you're not knowledgeable, they talk down to you. And you know, as a public figure, people feel like they could just say what the fuck they want to say to me. And I like to remind them every time that they can't do that. Yeah. And you know, they they expect me to be a regular. Uh, like the the whole reason why I'm even here today was because my sister, uh, shout out to Karima, my sister sent me uh, a, a, a link to you guys where somebody was questioning whether I should even be talking about wrestling on Twitter. It's like, bro, I am, you know, they, they expect me to be the celebrity that tries to sell you some shit and then disappears, promote something and then disappears. I'm being myself. If you want to come at me, 
I'm going to come back at you. Just leave me alone. Let me talk to myself on the internet like everybody else. I'm minding my business. You got no life, dog. Are you do it. And they, and they want to be miserable and stay miserable and get you pissed off. But let me, I wanted to tell you something that I don't know if you know about this way. If you don't, you're going to like the story. So I'd never really been through your, uh, and it was Joe, our producer here. He was the one that was like, oh, Shed Jackson, you know, he really watched wrestling and all this. And then I guess somebody sent it, that letter that you read. We're like, cool, so you can get him. So thank you for coming on. But um, so I look at your uh, your Twitter, right? Yeah. Just to see what, you, what you're about. And then I see that thing about Okada that you're talking about. Okay. You, you put it up there. Okay. Where he beat up the young boy. Yeah. That was dope. Okay. Let me tell you what. <laughs> let me tell you something about young boy. Do you know about young boys in Japan? You mm-hmm. do. Okay. So I went to this promotion called Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. It was run by this guy called Onita. Have you ever heard of him? No. Is that the one where Sheik was having fire death matches? This yeah. Time? Right. Yeah. When he did, when he did all that. It's blue it's ring. Fun. Yeah. It's very right. Joe White down, bro. It's really crazy shit. Really okay. crazy okay. shit. It's like yeah. street wrestling and shoot martial artist blowing up rings and it was wild. <laughs> so, right. so the so needed the boss and he's super over like a Terry Funk type guy and says it's all mangled from you know Blady and he needed. He's one of the tough guys that does crazy shit and people like him for. You know how the Japanese are. The more you fuck them up, the more over you are with them, right? Yeah. So he's sitting down in, in this chair and in, the, in the showers, and the shower is on him, on right? One guy stand pulling him, another guy's fucking washing his back, another guy can see, another guy is not back. He gets up, they all dry him off, they put a robe on, they put cologne. That's just that you're high enough, they still do it now. When I, what, what the young boys did, okay? So anyways, let me tell you this story about Okada. About, uh, Okada. So you saw the move where the guy came from behind and he kicked him in the eye? No, yeah. Okay, you know where that came from? Mm-hmm. That actually happened. That's a father to a match between Ricky Chokey, okay? Old school, tough guy, I think he would, went to the Olympics in judo and... Um, Akira Maeda. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. Okay. So Akira had a really, really bad attitude and he didn't like to do jobs. And he had started this this promotion, which was called like U- 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 UWFI. Okay. Yeah. And it was, it was like half stoop and half work, but the work was really snug. So you couldn't tell the difference. And then he got into a fight and I promised mean, my favorite wrestling grip panel of all time, Tiger Mask, Satoru Sayama. And he kind of got into a fight with him, and the business broke down. But in Tokyo, at Thurapon Hall, they considered him like a real badass for the street promotion. And so they wanted him to do a job, I believe, for Ricky Chochi. And he was he was mad because the night before, since he was this tough guy, he had a match with, uh, what's this guy, uh, Von Emmer, Kerry Von Emmer, okay? And he did kind of like American style, and everybody shit on him because he was supposed to be the shooter. And so the next night, Clay was he Kate Chokin broke his orbital bone. Now remember, Chokin had the guy the sharpshooter and his back to so it's kind of a pussy move. Yeah. Fucking. And so he gets up, bro. He's fucking pissed. And they're breaking him up for real. And the place is going nuts, and they're chanting Maya's name, not Chokin's name. It was crazy, bro. Check that out. Okay. <laughs> That's where that came from. Yeah. Hey, you're a, yeah. you you're an artist, right? Yeah. Um, and you're a big rest. Bro, have you ever thought of uh of delving into like uh like like creative? Absolutely. Um have you ever reached out to Depth? I mean you're you're an African American, you're famous, you're you're very you're creative, you you're a big wrestling fan. Have you ever thought of like hey, going and like working for them? Uh I definitely have. Um I went to uh, USC, fight all. I went to USC for screenwriting. That's what I was doing before I was an actor. Was uh, was writing, and you know, in the middle of my second year, my dad comes in the kitchen and he's like, "Yo, you know, they're taking this NWA movie serious." And I'm like, "All right, the judge, you know, happy for you." And he's like, "No, I, in a perfect world, I would want you to audition and, and play me." And so I just now I'm an actor, you know. But writing has always been my you know my my first love so and i and i got into the point where i see the vision like i see where 
things are being planted in it. And I'll, if you look on my Twitter, I'm real heavy with my predictions and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty nice and pretty spot on. Uh, all right, all right. I'm not gonna let you get away there. Who's the one need the Royal Walker? Oh, what you talking about, man? Phil Brooks. <laughs> Phil Brooks, man, my boy Phil. Phil Brooks is taking that dude. You know, they're they're pumping Cody up to me. But I'm sorry, it's gonna be a lot of sad kids in Philadelphia, baby. And let me, you know <laughs> Let me ask you this. You would you're in what is the what does the room look like for for a US in in, in uh, a college uh, writing like a, a college screenwriting class. What type of like is it? Is it nerdy? Is it cool? Because my, my my visual picture is is that like there was a period of time in professional wrestling where like when you watch the, the, like let's be honest, you know, five ten years ago WWE was terrible. Right? I, I, mm. you know, we we watch the show just right, but the right, one thing was, it, that was yeah. bad for years for years since like the, the mid you know the like 2010 is how bad the comedy was on the show. Like yeah. they would do comedic spots and it wasn't funny. And I always just, I didn't know what, what the writers were like, right? And yeah. I just always had a visual picture of like, just kind of like a bunch of nerdy, you know, guys that had a bunch of comic books in their backpack, just, you yeah. know, and stuff I'm like, you know, but, but what is like the, the, the writing and class, like, like the, what does it look like? Is it kind of nerdy or is it people like you? Cool. What was it like? It's, um, I mean, my, my freshman class, it was only 10 of us. Like the like it, it's per class. There's only ten students, and you know you got your your probably gonna have your real nerdy guy, super artsy dude, uh, the girl next door, the emo chick, the edgy guy, and I was the black guy. It was just like how things it's, kind of worked out. And it's it's not about me in a in a not so anyways, right? Wait, in the, in the USC and the, the, the screenwriting, they're acting like they're going to USC. Were there, how many second generation like uh, uh, students are there? Like the sons of actors, or, you know, like out, out of the Hollywood community. Oh, you're, second, you're, you're a second generation, you know, uh, media personality. So yeah, in in my class, I think I, w- I was the only one who was second generation, but. You know, while I was going to USC, uh, Master P. Son was there. He wasn't in the uh, uh, School of Cinematic Arts, but uh, I know Kobe's daughter, uh, Natalia, she's going. She's in the uh, School of Cinematic Arts over at USC oh. right now. So it, it, it happens, uh, but not not in my freshman year. I, I I was the only one that was of that. But they try to get they try to get a a, a, a type of writer from each genre kind of and put them in one class and see if we all can blend and not kill each other uh right. a, a cool friend of mine uh from that class shout out jeremy novick he's from boston though so we argue a lot but <laughs> <laughs> oh you've been in so i forgot to tell you this i should have warned you early on the show but we've got instant hit heat right now just add water and mix you're a laker fan i'm a celtic fan oh how's it going this year oh no you know, we're gonna look at This is this is why I like to do shit through my Ajax, cause like she <laughs> likes to get information. I got abilities. Homies, look up. <laughs> but I mean, the Celtics, you know, uh, fuck them. But they are a team that I respect. You know, yeah. we have to respect you. Right. I respect them. We're the we're the Hatfield and McCoys. I just went. To a Celtics versus Rockets game and sat courtside yeah. full Laker gear. So, you know, oh, I'm disrespectful as they come. What were the Celtics players telling you? Oh, Jalen Brown was like, all right, man, I, I, I see you got to be on your Laker stuff. You damn right I got to be in my Laker stuff, Jalen Brown. What you thought this was? The staff, the staff in the arena uh, gave me two warnings. Yeah. But how, I'm they, well, I'm again. How, how great of a life is that to sit courtside and talk it with the players, bro? That's the shit, dude. <laughs> That's that my best. Like, I come from, I don't know if you guys know this, I come from a long line of shit talk. <laughs> so, like, I, I need it. To, like, it's like, you yeah. know, it's part of me to, to get in that. And it's all funny games. You know, it's all love. As soon as the, you know, clock hit triple zero, you're just a regular human again. <laughs> but after, after that, you know. We, we, we talk a lot of sports in this show, so I want to talk about this with you, too. Because somebody posed this question yesterday, and I want to see what your answer is. Uh, maybe you you got an answer, but why is you know the the ratings are down for the NBA, right? And it's kind of like you know my theory was 
is that because a lot of the guys that drove the ratings the past, like, say, four to ten years, mm. you know, Steph, LeBron, the Rams, stuff, it's like their teams aren't that great anymore. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, like the, the, I don't think the fan base has really transitioned into, oh, you know, wow, the, the, you know, the Timberwolves are on tonight. Let's, let's, let's catch that. You know, the Timberwolves are playing the, the Sixers, you know, like, and you're not really selling that to like this, these people that have been growing and living with, with Steph and LeBron and stuff. Do you think the fact that like maybe these super teams all got together and just kind of like they've been duds so far? Yeah, they, they, they shit the bed. Yeah. They shit the bed. Uh, you know, I, I hate that I live in a world where the Clippers and Celtics are good at the same time. I, I don't want to watch basketball ever again. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it sucks. And um, when you got the number one team in the West, the Timberwolves, they're only on five national games this year. Yeah. Whoa. Like, that, that's 77 games I can't watch unless I got a VPN to channel who gives a shit. And Bro, it's- that's a good team. <laughs> Yeah, they're nice. Anthony Edwards is a star. Yeah. Cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did, did you see? Yeah. Did you see if somebody was showing the the the, the, the mirror clip? Bro, the like Anthony Edwards game, like his style and the way he moves, very similar to Michael Jordan. Yeah, very yeah, similar. Was, so, like it, it, it kind of mirrors him a little bit, you know, like, like with yeah. his fade away, with his jumpers and stuff. So go ahead. I feel like as a shooting guard, if you're not watching, I first of all, I'm a fan and I am a student. Uh, of the closest thing we've ever seen to Michael Jordan with Kobe Bryant. So if you're not studying those dudes as a shooting guard, you're out of your mind. And so, yeah, it, 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 he has, he's got his own style, though, his own flavor. The kid's got charisma. You know, he's the best thing to hit Minnesota since uh, Target. So he's got to figure out how to get out of there. I like that. I like that. <laughs> You're going to steal that for him? <laughs> yeah. What, 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 Garnett what, what, left. They haven't had somebody left. Yes, Garnett, bro. You went, you went and you joined. This, I, 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 you, I, you, hey. <laughs> should he have a chance to win one after everything he did for Minnesota? He should he have a chance just putting up with Go up. Show. I'm about to go up. Bro. <laughs> <Wrong. laughs> bro. Bro. Y'all talk about that one punk ass championship like it was a fucking dynasty and it kills me. Like, oh, what you you start a super team with Ray Allen and Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett and you won the chip? No fucking shit. I'm so happy for y'all. Yeah, Bynum and Trevor Ariza are hurt and we still took y'all to six games. Get over it. What happened in 2010? What happened in 2010? Okay. We got received Collins okay. too. Roger McDougal got his power. If Purple would have been hurt, we would have won that game. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I mean, look at me. You and me are going to get along with me. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. You go, you're a huge Laker fan. What is it? What is the town like? What's the vibe in the town of the team? And what's the vibe on LeBron? Do they kind of just have like these kind of like ever feel like this is kind of LeBron's fault? Or are they kind of like, we need to give LeBron some more stuff. Like we're all, we're all in on LeBron. What's what's what is what's what's the tone of the Lakers, bro? It's so many Laker fans who are just fickle, bro. They're just so like shaky, and it kills me. You know, we when we got LeBron, it was so. I I'm not gonna act like I always love LeBron. All right, I was a Kobe loving LeBron hater, openly admitted. I was at his net any chance I could get. I, I like I would just verbally attack LeBron, and then when Kobe retired and Kevin Durant goes to the Warriors, LeBron has a game one where he goes for fifty-one points, and like the only reason why they don't win is because J.R. Smith had a brain fart and didn't throw the ball back up. But it was oh, after man. that game where I was like, dude, I'm a fucking hater. What what's like I can't. I can't hate on this man no more. This man is amazing, and I'm not going to enjoy it because I I like it. It was just, it was no point with Kobe being gone. I had always felt like they were ready to bump Kobe out the way so fast. There's only one year I can think of where they even openly said Kobe was the best player in the NBA. But when Braun came in and everybody's calling him the chosen one, Kobe was coming off three rings. So as a Laker fan, I felt disrespected. 
once Kobe left and I, I really got to sit down and watch this dude, I was like, all right, can't hate on this man anymore. And then once I officially announced that I stopped being a hater, God talked to me from the heavens. He said, Shay, guess what? He's coming to the Lakers. And a lot of people hated that. A lot of people felt like by us getting LeBron, that that somehow has anything to do with Kobe. And it's because Kobe's such a a, a key piece of the, the city's culture. We, you know, he, we saw him, he was a boy. When we drafted Kobe for the first four years, he wouldn't have been able to drink champagne if we won a championship. Like that was our, our kid. And so these people have it in their minds that it has anything to do with Kobe are crazy. You are the Lakers, the best player of all time, no matter who you think it is, wore purple and gold. Michael Jordan's biggest flaw was that he was never a Laker. It is like he still was shit. Yeah, it was yeah, whatever. I got you know, I got a blast. Since you speak it, can I go? I want to say he was voiced by like me. Yo, like, but this is interesting too. You know what? Is I'm I'm 56 years old and I'm pretty I'm pretty like I'm not the most emotional guy, right? I'm hard of a hard nut to crack, but I, I, of all the celebrities I've known in my lifetime and such as um, fans and stuff, you know, I wasn't even a Laker fan, dude. I tell, tell me how you felt, bro. You weren't a I, Laker fan? No, I was not. You know how much footage? You know how much yeah. footage there is of you in Laker jerseys? <laughs> yeah, for, uh, they told me did right. Yeah. No, but yeah. you know what's funny, dude? Well, I don't. <laughs> I know. I've never been depressed over like when a celebrity dies. Uh, I was just, I mean, the, when Kobe, I couldn't believe it. I, that someone, I just hit that, that, like for a whole week, I just felt like, like awful. He's like yeah. the only celebrity I've ever like, you know, and I just want to be, you know, maybe it's because the guy was so great at what he did. Like on a, on like a competitive love, you know, like the, uh, just like. And, yeah. Like we knew we lost some, some, somebody great, but even worse. <laughs> Is his daughter died? And that made oh him. my god! I just I'm just saying, but like, I, I, have you ever been more depressed? Like, like, you know, a lot of celebrities, obviously, but the, 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 how hard did that one hit you, dude? I was filming, and actually, the anniversary is coming up in like two days, I think, uh, or tomorrow. I don't know what today's date is, uh, but I was getting ready to shoot a a basketball show uh, called Swagger, um, where I play the coach, and you know, we're gearing up. Everything's all good. The twenty second had just passed, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking big shit. I'm like, do you guys know that today in history, Kobe Bryant scored eighty one points? Like everybody knows, I'm the Laker guy on set, right? Right. And you know, I it's the it's the twenty sixth. You know, we our first day of shooting is the next day. I just finished doing a rehearsal. I'm I'm headed to the car. And next thing I hear, shake, shake, and when I say like everybody from set is by my car, everybody comes to my car. And I say, what, what's going on? And then, uh, the, the first AD, a guy by the name of Austin, he's, uh, in his earpiece. And he's like, are you sure? Is it confirmed? Are you sure? Is it confirmed? And I'm like, first thing I say, swear to God, because we got, we had just got Braun and AD and all that. First thing I said, is it about the Lakers? And he looks at me and he goes, it's worse. So immediately I think it's about my dad. So I take my phone out and I, uh, my, I got about 30 messages on my phone. And I look at the bottom and it, you know, it's, it says what it says. And I looked at all of them. I got in my truck, drove to the hotel. I was in Virginia. I drove to the hotel and I cried my eyes out. Like, oh, did you do wrong? Yeah. yeah, that's my hero. I had two months before. Did you ever get to meet him? I had, I, I, I met Kobe maybe four times. And uh, wow. two months before he passed was the first and only time I got to talk to him on the phone. And it's because I was, you know, I was at a point in my career earlier in the year where I kind of felt stagnant. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I was drunk in my apartment. And uh, I call, I, I, I get on Twitter and Kobe follows me. And I DM Kobe and I was like, listen, dude, if you got any type of books, any, any motivation, any, any like sayings or mottos or movies for me to watch to kind of get myself out of this, you know, I, I, I really need it right now. And he gave me his number and I'm drunk. So I'm like, please don't call me right now because I, I cannot, yeah. I, I can't <laughs> give you what I, what I want to give. And he called me one day when I was coming back from a table read 
and he talked to me for 25 minutes and he we talked about our dads and what it's like going into the same career as your father and he said he told me that the feeling that i am ball player too right yeah joe jelly ben bryant and uh and the clippers low-key they should hang his jersey yeah. but uh so i'm I, he he told me that feeling that i have that feeling that you haven't done shit hold on to it as long as you can because that will keep you going that will push you forward and you know that like that's the last thing i got to hear from him you know i i got to talk to my hero for those 25 minutes in a, in the back of a hoover and then you know before i know it he was gone that was our like that's the last time i got to chop it up with him and it sucked i i, I still got the text thread on my phone i, I won't delete it I still got our DMs on Twitter. I, I won't delete them. It's uh, to this day I get choked up about Cole. Yeah. yeah, I want to vote against yeah, so a, a, a different debate. The debate that people have had over the years is I want to get your take on. I want to give you mine. You see, see what you think. There's always been the the, the LeBron versus Jordan debate, right? Like mm-hmm. who's who is better? Something, man. I don't think that you can like like. Here's the way I describe it. If you look at like the the professional basketball players today, every, everybody on the court is an athlete. You know, you got guys, you know, that are jacked and you're well, well fit. You go back in the day, you, know, you look at like, there was maybe like four or five guys in the league that had, that, that d- definitively had light muscles. You know, like mm. Michael Jordan, Evan Willis, Xavier McDaniel. And like, you could look, maybe point to like one or two more, but Man. everybody was kind of like, they just had like the slender arm, the slender build, just like they were there tall or small, you know, but my thing is, it's like, if you took, the LeBron Jordan today, okay, six foot nine, two hundred and fifty-two pounds. All right, mm-hmm. and you stuck him in that era, okay, and put him on the court. Arm alone won an MVP, and all the guy could do was rebound and score. He yeah. was six six foot ten, two sixty, an yeah. inch taller than LeBron, eight pounds heavier. Now, just imagine if Michael Jordan had to had to compete against a guy that if Carmelo Malone could dribble passes everything other day. bro he would have blown him away but take michael jordan now and put him in the lead today i still think michael jordan because he would figure things out would still dominate and still be like steph stuff and they what, what's your what's your take on that because that's the way i look at i did say anything oh shit but he, brought, he answered here's the one thing that i loved about but that michael jordan played in bro if you came down the middle you were going to pay for it mm-hmm. they don't have that much anymore Right. No, not at all. Uh, right. But what I what I'll say about Mike, Kobe, and Braun, Michael and Braun had natural physical gifts that Kobe didn't have. Kobe had to be more of a mind game to to take out to be as great as he was. He didn't have he- uh, the hands as big as Jordan. He couldn't jump as high as Jordan. He definitely didn't have bronze size. I mean, Bron Bron is a fucking forward, right? All right, yeah. this dude is is, is just <laughs> he's going to have different yeah. stats than a right. it's, it's right. just yeah. what yeah. it is. And but with Kobe, Kobe's work ethic and his desire to be better, he found a way to trump those natural physical attributes that those that other players might have over him and still succeed. And that's why Kobe is, you know, obviously I'm a Laker fan, so I'm going to be biased. Or like, let's just be real. But Kobe is my, that's my goat. And Michael Jordan was just physically different than everyone he played against. He's just the, he is the next piece in NBA evolution. And so kids grow up copying, mirroring, and using Michael as the blueprint. Thus, Michael makes the entire league better by the time he leaves. The best of that better league was Kobe Bryant. Uh, next thing, LeBron James. Another shift where nobody is physically like this guy. He is the next piece in the evolution. So who in today's game, in your opinion, got in your brain? We haven't seen him yet. They they just uh, they just drew up another motherfucker out of a lab with Victor Wimbanyama. Right there, you know, I mean, yeah, right. But that kid, that kid's just, I mean, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, you know, that guy was way overhyped. Like, but then, you know, he, he's good. But I'm like, look at this guy going, like, dude, this skinny, the funny, funny thing. I go, what's this skinny kid going to do when he plays MB? Okay. Right. <laughs> we saw it. Yeah. We saw he's, 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 he's,
what kind of a season is that B having on Shane? Bro, is that ridiculous? Dude, he's averaging 40 points in the last month and a half. Yeah. Right. You know, 23 games over 30 points. Yeah. The beast. He is a regular season monster. Right. We've seen this. We know this dude's an MBE. Oh, MB. play on. Yeah, incredible. He's like, play on. Has work. He's like, that's that's I didn't say it. I didn't yeah. say it. <laughs> but when you're, you know, like, come on, yeah. bro. That's where we need to see you do it. And I'm glad you put up 70. Against you know the 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 rookie on the Spurs, <laughs> but like come on, dog, you know, and it just happened to fall on the anniversary of eighty one. Sad, the league is rigged, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I hope uh, I hope he can figure it out. You know, the the city of Philadelphia, uh, they're a passionate fan base. Uh, sorry that Allen Iverson couldn't get a ring. That like as a Laker fan, it really bothers me that. Allen Iverson's only attempt was against the Lakers because, like, I love Allen Iverson. I love Reggie Miller. I want them to win, but you're not winning against me, bro. So, uh, you know, I hope the Sixers do well because that means that the Celtics lost. <laughs> we got a squad this year, unlike you. But you know what's really messed the guys up? I feel I was the, 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 you had, like, I don't know, how many different starting lineups. I That's the coach, bro. Yeah. Darder. I don't <laughs> eat pork, so get this ham the fuck out my face, bro. I like I I guess you got I'm sorry. Does that make you crazy all those starting lineups? It does. It it really bothers me. And you know, as a black man, I don't see the Lakers. I have a lot of black coaches, bro. And I want you to succeed. But right. you just not doing it. And it's it's bothering. Do you think LeBron's gonna get him out of there? That that's that's another thing. He's is the way to that. When the Lakers get great pieces, it's oh my god, Rob Polinka is a genius. Da, 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 da. And then when it doesn't work, well, this is the team LeBron wanted. So like, it's, <laughs> right. it's such a yeah, right, right, yeah. He can't win, dude. Right. He can't win. And when you Bro, gotta, you see, oh, that Milwaukee. The, let me ask you this: Did you see that thing about? I don't know how long ago, but it wasn't that long ago, where LeBron was explaining to Anthony Davis, uh, it was doing, yeah, I know, what the next play was going to be and what the player was going to do. And they went out there that that's exactly what happened. I would say, wow, LeBron would be an incredible coach. Do you remember, you remember the clip I'm talking about or no? No, I don't know what specific one, but I know that's what, in 2020, when we had him and Rondo, that happened on a nightly basis. Yeah, it would like there's no and I've never seen a lot of basketball geez. mind like him. Yeah, you put in with Braun, it was insane, dude. And we blew the team up because Brooklyn got James Harden and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and we got scared, so we tried to soup our roster up and it fucked up our chemistry. And we were never able to get that back. You'd like to see you have an alley because I watched a lot of later games, I think. The, the piece that we're missing that no one is bringing up, we miss dearly Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder defensively gave us what the, what we're missing. You know, we, we go on these, what Laker fans call the fake comeback. Every Laker game, we have a fake comeback where it looks like, oh, shit, here they come. And then there's something missing. Dennis brought such defense and quickness that that was one of the the pieces that we're missing right now, and poor D'Angelo, he, the writing's on the wall, brother. Uh, you know, there's great spots to eat in at Atlanta. It looks like you're on your way. I don't <laughs> want that for you, but like they fucked up. They fucked up. You know, I, I really was hoping that D'Lo, with his second round with the Lakers, that were, that we could have did something special. We got to the Western Conference Finals, but nobody believed it. So it, it's, it, it sucks to see. I really don't want to leave uh, Stone Cold Reeves Austin. My man Austin Reeves, AR-15. But we, we need oh. something, dude. Yeah, like Dave yeah. Vincent. Huh? Let me ask you. you like Dave Vincent? Are there- Dave Vincent ain't did shit for me, bro. <laughs> How do you think that's- He was terrible are there, for are, enemy. Yeah. Are there actually any Clippers fans in LA? And what are they like? They got to be those annoying people right now. Yeah, uh, well, I like to call them vermin. Uh, I like to, uh, <laughs> I, I speak of them as a, a, a virus that has infected the city. 
because uh, y'all weren't there, bro. Y'all weren't there. I, I sought you, and you weren't there. Y'all are Laker fans that when times got tough, you left us because you were happy to see some fucking lobs thrown to Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan and thought you had some shit. <laughs> and so, like, I, I, I look at the majority of that fan base as, you know, transformers, deflectors. They they left us. Traders. You know, they, traders, bro. And <laughs> it's okay. Like I said, it's the same <laughs> shit with WWE and AEW. It's okay to like an alternative. It's okay to support the other team. But don't you in your fucking life act like you was never a Laker fan. We built this goddamn city, bro. We are the logo of the league, bro. Every jersey, every basketball, every sock, every camera has a tiny picture of a Laker on it. You better Dude, recognize what? or step aside, bro. <laughs> and you you like in, in the, the top 10 scores of all time seven of them wore purple and gold y'all don't even have a fucking retired jersey do you know how hard it is to not have one good player that you want to put up there and then you brought out blake griffin in front of a, a sold out crowd said he was going to be first to hang in the raptors and then you sent him to detroit to die y'all are cursed <laughs> and you should be you deface the magic johnson statue there's not a statue for me to deface, you cover up my banners. You covered up the Sparks banners, bro. <laughs> the Sparks, y'all are disgusting. Vermin. Look, I can't wait for y'all to get the fuck out. <laughs> Both of them are two nature's bad. I have products. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, something I wanted to ask you that I was curious, but what it, uh, I, I'm not on. What happened to these rappers that in the 90s, they were really big, and I don't care of them anymore. I, you would from you know like Exhibit and WC and Mac Ten. What happened to those guys? Well, Dub, uh, Dub is a you know he's damn near a family member. Um, him and my dad still on the road. Uh, he's still my my dad's right hand man when my father goes out to perform. Um, you know Exhibit Exhibit has you know once he got to pit my ride and all that type of stuff. My man started dipping his money in. And you know other businesses and stuff like that. So uh, you know he he's eating off more than rap right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, it, it was a a point in time where I guess a, a lot of them found success in other avenues. Uh, but yeah, you know they still every now and then at a festival you get these these groups together. And they still talk shit just the same. My uh, my dad, Too Short, E40, and Snoop. They just you know they they started a group. Mount Westmore, it's uh they they still out there. But that's a few years old, right? But that's a few no, years old, right? No, I I think uh if I'm not mistaken, the album came out last year. But okay. they started the group, I think, about two three ago. But they finally got the yeah. album together. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, there there's the new music nowadays is just it's it's a different era, man. Uh, I think. Ice T, I, I'm sorry, Ice T, if I'm misquoting you or you didn't say this at all, but it used to be rappers would talk about, uh, you know, selling shit here and there, you know, dealing drugs or whatever. Ooh. And now all the, all the rappers is talking about being on drugs. <laughs> so like, I tell you that's really what it is. Different, different time, different era. Yeah. Popping bottles and popping perks and yeah, you know, like, right. I mean, <laughs> You, you, you used to be and it, the slagger, and now you the fiend. Right. Well, yeah. Before it was, uh, before at the family beginning, which is where I come from, right? Yeah. Everybody had like a gimmick. Slick Rick, Public Enemies, Run yeah. EMC, you know, they had the, you the shit on, and they all had a different style. Bro, anybody kind of sound the same nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They thought I'm trying to be the old man chasing the cloud. But it's I had and I and I know what hooks them is the beat and shit, but it's just it's evolution of what, of what it is now. I, I I think I think a big part of that is in that era it was more and you know later on into the nineties into the early two thousands it was more competitive. You know people rapped to be known as the best rapper. Now 
I'm you, you rapping just to make some money. And all that take is something catchy. Now, all you got to do is get a, a popular song on TikTok trending. And you can get up on the charts, bro. You can get some right. plaques. You get some plaques now. Your price go up. And with the advances in technology, anybody can be a producer. Anybody can be an engineer. If they just look the shit up on YouTube on how to do it and then put some shit out, there's no, there's not necessarily the same filter and quality that those other eras had. And there's not enough people competing to be top dog. People just want to get their shine on. Now, when you say that there is a lot of what I said before that a lot of the music sounds the same nowadays? Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it goes, whoever, whoever can kick in, whoever controls the summer, whoever has the album or the sound that you hear throughout the, the three, four months of summer. When you're outside. Everybody, everybody's going to copy that guy and then try to like get something similar to kind of ride that wave that whatever person that was set. And so you get a lot of people influenced and, and this kind of sound like, like if you go on YouTube right now, you can see some shit that'll be like Drake type beat. This is a Gatry type beat. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, it's literally so you can rap like Drake on this. So you can rap like future on this. Well, well, here's the, the easiest way to get in that those rabbit holes and see what the thing is. Just go on YouTube and start playing some videos, and the algorithm will take you into these things, like you know, like the, the similar similar sounds and stuff, you know. Yeah, and it's it's you know you start. I know we got that. I was watching the fucking. Uh, <laughs> I was watching the VMAs, and I was like, who the fuck? I don't know not one person. <laughs> Me too. Me too. And I didn't even know none of the presenters either. I was like, I'm what an audience got. <laughs> yeah, like, and, 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 and then it's weird because, you know, you know, like, friend is a thing now, but you have so many people, you're not even sure if it's a man or a woman anymore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's the second year in a row where I'm looked at the double XL freshman class and I'm like, damn, I'm 32. Like, am I, you know, am I anybody? Yeah, I'm like, come on, bro. Well, the right. I know, I know, I'm not that far, am I? Right. Hey, this yeah. is just like I'm out the right. loop. People ask me, so what you listen to? And I'm like, man, I real shit. I be listening to oldies, <laughs> you know. Like, I, I, I don't like you mean about the loop you listen to. Like, I like to hear grow people taste. I got, I got a bit of everything, you know. Uh, whenever I, whenever I go to set or like uh, I got a role to do. I love listening to, you know, some some Teddy Pendergrass, some stylistics. Um, I like uh, I like a little bit of the Beatles, uh, even though I'm more of a Queen fan. I really think Queen is dope. Uh, and nobody has honestly. I mean, like I know the Beatles are the Beatles, but like, right. bro, Queen, Queen might be it. Queen, and uh, yeah, just a bit of everything. Whether uh, Beastie Boys, Intergalactic, when I'm feeling hyped. After every, uh, whenever I, I rap a movie, I play another one, Vice the Dust. Um, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm a bit of everywhere, you know? So we was listening to some shot eight while we were shooting the hoops earlier. It's just like, it's just whatever I'm feeling, but it's not all the time, uh, any of the new shit. And I, I hate to be that guy, but nothing grabbed me unless it's like somebody I already know, like I fuck with. 21 Savage, I fuck with obviously the Kendrick, Drake, uh, Cole, and like that type shit. Uh, Tyler, the creator, I fuck with Tyler hard. But it's just like the newer guys, nobody's grabbed me yet where I'm like, I'm a fan. Right. Before you get out of here, let me ask you this. So who are your favorite uh, wrestlers, whether they're friends or just forwards in WWE and AEW? Um... Everybody who follows me knows uh, Punk is my boy. Uh, right. Uh, shout out to Phil. Uh, he and, and me and him clicked on Twitter, and uh, we exchanged numbers, and we just been cool. You know, I I love a straight shooter, and that dude, if he don't like some shit, right. he's gonna tell you immediately. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's how you back. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, like I I fuck with that dude, and he uh he had my back. Uh, what do you think of that promo on Monday when? 
He goes, I'm more of the American dream than you and me. He goes, right? And he goes, I'm more CM Punk than you. Great. Bro, chef's kiss, dude. And then yeah. for, for, for him to look at Cody and say, you know, you got the cover of the video game, which is what Punk had. And then right. a star who's been away for so long comes and takes your spot, which is what Rock did to Punk, which is what Rock might do to Cody and what Punk is doing to Cody. It was just so many layers to it. I was like, yo, these dudes are on fire right now. But Punk is my boy. Uh, the Usos, whenever when I started going to WWE events, uh, uh, the Usos were one of the first dudes who, like, you know, kind of brought me in. It was real cool with me. Uh, Bianca Belair is the homegirl. Zelina Vega is the homegirl. Uh, shout out to Montez Ford. Uh, Alistair Black, please come home. I'm sorry, AEW, but Alistair Black, please come home. Uh, and uh, my homie over at AEW, my dude Swerve, uh, me and him chop it up uh, like at least once a week. And uh, uh, my man Ricky Starks, Ricky Starks is hilarious. Uh, so I, you know, I got, I got, I got people on both sides. So when I, when I'm critical of either company, it's coming from a real place. When, when AEW did full gear at the forum, that was the best shit I ever seen them do. That was such a hot pay per view, and even then, you have a, a hardcore AEW fan saying that that was their worst pay per view. So I don't know what the fuck to like anymore, man. I'm I'm gonna just keep <laughs> like on right shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, dude. Uh, oh, but I'm not gonna get out of here without telling you about your Celtic curse because I talked about the Clipper curse. What yeah, uh, Celtic curse. Give me the Celtic curse. The way that y'all did, my boy Isaiah Thomas. After he lost his sister and you guys sent him to Cleveland, y'all are cursed. And until y'all do right by Isaiah Thomas, y'all will not. Well, we had to put up with fucking Kyrie Irving fucking up to the chemistry, or we would have um, maybe won the championship that year, that ball hogger that he is. He fucked up that old Celtic team. I think that yeah. makes us even. All right. All right. Yeah, right. Sam, me and you go talk. <laughs> hey. Okay, um, I'm going to give you a date, and if you and if you want, we do show with you. I, um, I help run a show in Tijuana, a, a Lucha Libre show. Uh, okay. It's February 17th. If you want to come down, I'll invite you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'll see you. I'll see what's up. My birthday is the next, literally a week after that. So I, I, yeah. I'm like, I got to see what my plans are looking like. But, dude, anytime you need me, whether it's this yeah. or whatever, just get your boy. Dude. Hey. You know, Disco was talking about you being a, a writer at WWE, which is a great idea. You could also be a manager. Oh, my God, bro. I, y'all y'all see, when I get going, I get going. I love yeah. how to promo for yeah. somebody, dude. Yeah, those are some good riffs. Those are such a good riffs. All right, man, man, where can even people find me? Oh, you can find me on, I'm easy to find. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at O'Shea Jackson Jr. Uh, you know, tweet at your own risk. I'm really a nice guy. I'm really chill, you know. Just don't, just don't come, just don't come at me crazy, all right? I'm I'm my dad's son, but my mom is the shit talker, and I hear her, so I get to go. But like you can find me at Instagram or Twitter at O'Shea Jackson Jr. When you see me in the street, I'll let you in. Pleasure to have you on here, and thank you for being on Keep It at One Hundred. Boom. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for no being here, man. That was fun. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank right. you. Hey, cool. Hey, we'll bring you uh, out, uh, bring you out soon, but if, if, if we uh, don't, just plan on coming before the. Uh, we'll do a uh, uh, WrestleMania. Well, no, we'll yeah, NBA not... playoffs, NBA playoff preview too. NBA so, not yeah, preview talk, too. Lots of basketball this year. Yeah, I'm I'm down. And also, uh, we didn't get to talk about it too much, but man, I want that motherfucking Patrick Mahomes to lose so bad. I'm gonna yeah. to lose so bad. <laughs> and I'm a Rams fan, but like I'm a Raider baby. So I hate the Chiefs, bro. I have been programmed to hate the Chiefs. And they were not supposed to be here. They sucked. <laughs> they don't have receivers. What <laughs> is going on? <laughs> Taylor Swift is rigged, bro. It's Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Cool, man. All right. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good one. You too. Thank you very much, man. All right. I'll turn this shit off.